All right, so here we continue. With the complaint filed by Gina Carano against Disney, Lucasfilm, and Huckleberry. Uh, and by the way, it's kind of, as you would have seen yesterday, assuming you saw yesterday's show, it's kind of cleverly drafted, really. So, of course, this subhead here, Defendants Strike Again, is a play on the Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back. <clears throat> Continuing now with the complaint. Even with Carano's star rising, defendants continue to harbor animosity against Carano for her political beliefs. On January 8th, 2021, Carano was inadvertently sent an email by Lynn Hale of Lucasfilm explaining that defendants were consumed with some on social media calling for Disney to fire Carano. They monitored a hashtag, meaning a string of related posts calling on Disney to hashtag fire Gina Carano. Hale's email, by the way, these emails, this one was uh, purportedly inadvertently uh, sent to Carano. Uh, but now that the suit is filed, when discovery begins, Carano is going to have access to all those email servers, text messages, all that stuff. Hale's email was the most recent in a string of emails that began with Disney CEO Chapek's statement on the events of January 6th. This, of course, were the protests at the Capitol. There were significant backlash to Chapek's statements, including harsh criticism of Disney for doing business with China, given the country's extensive human rights abuses and internment camps for the indigenous Uyghur people. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, folks. By the way, uh, I believe if you were to ask Andrew Esquire, the legal mindset, who does this deep coverage of Disney, he, he would tell you that almost all of Disney's profitability is from China. That's where they're making their money. Continuing now. Yet very quickly, the focus of the emails turns to Carano as some on social media chose to insert calls to fire Carano in responses to Chapek's online statement. Rather than focus on the criticism of Disney's business dealings in China, Disney instead was going to prepare a report on Carano, which Hale recommended start by saying that she didn't do anything to support the riots on DC. Of course, Carano had nothing to do with the events of January 6th. It was apparent that Chapek and his team were looking for ways to deflect from his failed leadership as Disney CEO, a pattern that included his obsession with and ultimate termination of Carano, his subsequent failings on Disney's contract dispute with Scarlett Johansson in July 2021, and political missteps in his criticism of Florida's parental rights and education law. This is the uh, grooming kids in schools law, uh, all leading to his termination in November 2022. On January 12th, 2021, he's back, by the way, I believe. They put in a new CEO who lasted about a year and got rid of him and brought Bob Chapek back. I believe Chapek was on the uh, shareholder call yesterday doing a very poor job of, of communicating. Uh, if you look at Andrew Esquire's stuff, again, he's very critical of Disney generally and Chapek in particular. Continuing now. On January 12th, 2021, Carano posted an interview she gave where she was asked about the controversy surrounding her social media post. An interview. Sorry, folks. An interview that clearly demonstrates that she was not seeking to denigrate anyone, but chose to speak up because there was a large group of people that were being silenced and that conversations were not happening. And because of her belief that discussion is good. She was not seeking a political platform, but believed that discussing issues makes everyone better. She also understands that simply speaking up made her a punching bag. Here's a tweet from uh, Gina Carano. Quote, hope you enjoy listening to this interview. With all the disinformation, it's nice to hear from someone's own mouth. Close quote. Uh, and then there's a comment to that tweet that says, never explain yourself to the cancel culture. Stay strong in your conviction. I would agree with that. Never apologize to cancel culture. It doesn't do any good. They just redouble their efforts. When they see you bending the knee, they're, they're vicious. Continuing now. All this occurred while Lucasfilm was publicly supporting Christina Ariel and her declaration that all white people are racist. That's a quote in there. Indeed, defendants even publicly claim that people should speak their mind based on their conscience. Of course, when Carano did so, 
defendants targeted her because her conscience did not align with their ideology. <clears throat> Here's a uh, a tweet from an account that's Star Wars, I guess it's the official Star Wars account, and it's quoting Martin Luther King Jr., quote, there comes a time when one, one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right, close quote. On February 10th, 2021, Carano made the following post in light of the trending hashtag fire Gina Carano to highlight the injustice of the mob seeking to destroy someone simply because of their political beliefs. And here's a Gina Carano tweet, quote, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where the Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? Close quote. Carano made no mention of a political party or a particular point of view and compared no one or a group of people to the Jewish people during the Holocaust. Rather, she noted the danger that arises when one point of view is singled out for harassment. Nevertheless, the apoplectic response from some on social media has been well-documented and shows a gross overreaction and intentional smear campaign against Carano. Indeed, one analysis of the social media events of February 10th, 2021 concludes, quote, Carano's contested post can be fairly critiqued as heavy-handed. Still, evidence has not come forth that Carano in any way emitted an iota of the hate or vitriol that was projected onto her by the persecution mob. Close quote. Indeed, the Auschwitz Museum even notes that the persecution of the Jewish people began long before the concentration camps, a concept that defendants refused to acknowledge even as they twisted and misrepresented Carano's post. And there's a tweet here from the Auschwitz Museum. I'm not going to read it in the interest of time, but it's you can pause and read it. It was just on the screen. Even Carano's male co-star, the late Carl Weathers, posted the exact same message, but no action was taken against him, nor was Weathers accused by defendants of denigrating people based on their culture and religious identity. And here's a Carl Weathers tweet. Uh, tweet quote, <clears throat> Who gets to decide what is appropriate for me or my children to read? The Nazis knew how to both control and to eradicate. Interesting playbook to emulate. What's next? Who's next? Close quote. And then he reposted someone else's tweet. It looks like it might be Barbara Hershey. Quote, it didn't start with gas chambers. It started with one party controlling the media, one party controlling the message, one party deciding what is truth one party censoring speech and silencing opposition, one party dividing citizens into us and them and calling in their supporters to harass them. It started when good people turned a blind eye and let it happen. Close quote. Defendants' disparate treatment of Weathers further demonstrates their discrimination against Carano on the basis of her sex and or political beliefs. Indeed, when he made the same generic statement, Weathers' comments were interpreted to attack Republicans, so he was given a pass by defendants. Yet defendants, rather than come to Carano's defense, proved her point by joining the unhinged mob and not just terminating Carano for the views expressed in her post, but accusing her of the very things she fought against, the denigration of other people. Contrary to the defendant's statement, at no point was Carano, quote, denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities, close quote, as Lucasfilm claimed. Rather, she was doing just the opposite, opposing such denigration and targeting of people just because they hold different beliefs. In fact, Carano constantly called for respect and decency when speaking with people and for respect and decency to be shown as she did when discussing important public issues. She has always held herself out as a person of integrity, and those she worked with can attest to this. She always treated everyone she met with kindness and compassion, as the Mandalorian staff can confirm. Nothing could be more inclusive or representative of the, va of the values Chapek claims defendants stand for. Defendants did not even have the courtesy 
to inform Carano of her termination in person before announcing it to the press. Ironically, Carano first learned of her termination by reading about it on social media. As a result of defendant's statement, Carano was inundated with stalkers and media hounding her at home. It became so bad that she justifiably feared for her personal safety. In addition to being terminated from her role on The Mandalorian, defendants canceled production of Rangers of the New Republic, refusing to hire her even though she had been told the role was hers. Further, prior to her termination, Carano had been told by Jon Favreau she was to be part of a series of new Star Wars movies based on the various Star Wars Disney Plus series to be released in theaters in the near future, a group of movies which includes the recently announced movie based on The Mandalorian. To this day, when someone wishes to attack Carano's appearance in any event, they frequently cite defendant's statement at the time of her termination and repeat the false ac accusation that Carano, quote, denigrated people based on their cultural and religious identities, close quote. Such decisions, including the harassment, targeting, termination, and post-termination smear campaign were made with the knowledge and approval of those who qualified as an officer, director, or managing agent of each defendant. Next subsection, defendant's post-termination smear campaign. By way of example of the post-termination smear campaign, prior her, to her termination in November 2020, Carano filmed an episode of Running Wild with Bear Gryllis, an adventure program that aired on Nat Geo, owned by Disney. Following her termination, Disney surreptitiously removed the episode of Running Wild that showcased Carano from the show's scheduled lineup, all in an effort to malign Carano and deny viewers the ability to see who she really is. After protests from fans and intervention by Bear Gryllis to have the episode run as scheduled, Disney did show the episode with Carano on May 10th, 2021. However, even though Disney ultimately aired the Running Wild episode with Carano, they removed all mention of her name or likeness in any promotional material or even listings of the episode. Next subsection, the aftermath of defendant's actions. Based on defendant's termination of Carano and their public statements regarding her, Carano's agent, United Artists, and her entertainment attorney dropped her as a client. Neither provided her any explanation. Discovery may reveal that this occurred at the express or implicit direction of defendants. Th so all these people are going to be deposed, obviously. Her, her lawyer, her agent, everyone possibly involved with any of this at Disney, Lucasfilm, or Huckleberry will be deposed under oath. The numerous opportunities Carano had because of her role in The Mandalorian, including invitations to read for new movies, invitations to attend high-profile events, and even opportunities to promote her work immediately stopped after defendants' public statements regarding her. Not hard to understand, right? I mean, Disney's giant, giant. Everybody wants to work for Disney. And you certainly don't want Disney mad at you because purportedly that, that this is what happens to you. Even so, in October 2021, one of Carano's co-stars, Giancarlo Esposito, was asked, quote, in The Mandalorian, who is your favorite co-worker to work with? Close quote. To which he replied, quote, my goodness. Okay, so you're, you're asking me for one. Yeah, I have to say, and this may be, well, okay, I'll say it without hesitation. Gina Carano. Close quote. In September 2021, another co-star, Emily Swallow, described Carano as follows. Quote, all I can say is that Gina and working with her personally, what impressed me about her from the beginning is that she is so interested in other people's opinions and is so welcoming of other people's opinions. She wants to have a genuine dialogue. She's just like that in her day-to-day -day life. On set, she's more curious about other people. She's very giving. She's very gracious. Close quote. Another of Carano's co-stars, Bill Burr, this would be the comedian who was on The Mandalorian, came to her defense after her termination saying the following, quote, she was an absolute sweetheart, super nice person, close quote. Even Forbes found defendant's justification for Carano's termination baffling and unjustified, noting that 72% of people surveyed disapproved of Carano's termination when they saw the actual post 
that apparently prompted defendant's decision because her post noted the dangers of targeting people for their beliefs. Next subsection, social media post from Carano's co-stars. This is going to be to show that the uh, co-stars, presumably male, um, were um, were posting you know political beliefs on social media, but were not held accountable in the same manner. Certainly not termination uh, that uh, Gina Carano was held, and therefore there's sex discrimination occurring here. Carano respects the rights of her co-stars to express their views on social media, even if they differ from her own and she remains personally fond of each of them. However, defendant's treatment of Carano stands in stark contrast to defendant's embrace of her male co-stars and other male employees. So the following examples are provided to demonstrate the discriminatory treatment Carano endured at the hands of the defendants. One of Carano's co-stars was Pedro Pascal, a male actor who played the role of the Mandalorian. Pascal was active on social media, often expressing his view on the Black Lives Matter movement, LGBTQ plus rights, protests for abortion rights, and the 2020 election. For example, on September 28, 2015, Pascal made the following post, drawing a clear distinction between himself and quote unquote conservatives. Here's a tweet from Pedro Pascal, quote, conservatives used gossip columns and headlines to manipulate city politics in the 40s. And it worked. Let's do better than them. Close quote. On August 16th, 2017, Pascal made the following post comparing President Donald Trump to Hitler. And it's uh, for those on the podcast, this is a. Uh, the written numerals 45 turned on an angle, so it looks like a swastika with a, a red circle with a line going through it. 45, of course, referring to President Trump. The 2017 post was not the only time Pascal compared President Trump and those who voted for him to Nazis. On June 20th, 2018, Pascal compared the United States' response to those entering the country illegally to the concentration camps of Nazi Germany in the following post. And it's just two pictures. One is uh, concentration camp victims behind barbed wire, labeled Germany 1944. And then one of those kids in cages pictures, uh, labeled America 2018. And again, on November 7th, 2020, Pascal made the following post, only to delete it shortly thereafter. So the post was, losers in 1865, and there's a Confederate flag. Losers in 1945, and there's a Nazi flag. Losers in 2020, and there's a MAGA cap. That's Pascal's post. Continuing now with the complaint. Defendants did not comment on, let alone condemn, Pascal's social media comments. On June 27, 2020, Pascal posted two Disney-owned Muppet characters, Bert and Ernie, as activists wearing, waving a transgender and LGBTQ plus pride flag and provo promoting Black Lives Matters and defund the police. And there's a, the, the just described cartoon image is presented here. Upon information and belief, Pascal was not disciplined, required to review documentaries on any of these topics or speak to individuals with contrary points of view or pressured to apologize for any of his posts. His employment was not terminated, and defendants made no public statements about his social media posts, much less refer to them as abhorrent. Likewise, Star Wars star Mark Hamill posted his comparison of Americans who support President Trump with Nazis in his September 18, 2022 post. And this is a picture of, I guess, a Trump rally, and Mark Hamill's comment is, I do not see a thing. Nazi, N-A-Z-I. This, of course, is nothing new for Hamill, who from 2016 described Donald Trump as Vladimir Putin's puppet and the KKK's candidate. Hamill has gone so far as to compare President Trump to the Third Reich without a word of protest from defendants. Defendants did not comment on, let alone publicly condemn, Hamill's social media comments. And unlike Carano, when Hamill was accused of liking a transphobic tweet, his explanation was accepted by defendants without question. 
Uh, and I guess I guess he had liked a tweet from J.K. Rowling, who's been similarly attacked uh, as Gina Carano. Of course, J.K. Rowling has several lifetimes of assets and resources, um, so she's basically beyond being canceled. That's certainly not true of Gina Carano. Continuing with the complaint, no action was taken against Hamill. On the contrary, he was allowed an appearance in the closing episode of the second season of The Mandalorian. Defendants even rehired Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn, a male, in 2019 after terminating him in 2018 for social media posts years earlier, such as, quote, I like when little boys touch me in my silly place, close quote. And, quote, the best thing about being raped is when you're done being raped and it's like, woo, this feels great, not being raped, close quote. And, quote, the expendables were so manly, I f the shit out of the little pussy boy next to me. The boys are back in town, close quote. And that's all the body of the complaint. So uh, yesterday, I actually started at the end of the complaint with these claims for relief. I'm not going to go over them in detail again, but there's basically three. One is wrongful discharge under the California Labor Code for political beliefs. The second is Again, wrongful discharge and refusal to hire for future work under California Labor Code. And the last is sex discrimination under California Government Code, Section 12940. And I did notice there was an appendix. So let's take a quick scroll for this. And what do they want? They want money, damages, punitive damages. They say they want reinstatement, uh, but I don't believe anyone would think that would be realistic. Um, so I'm sure they'll just settle for that. It's just a lever for the defense to pull to get more money. There's the lawyers, demand for a jury trial, and exhibits. So they do provide some evidence. Uh, let's see. Oh, just this one. <clears throat> so one of the rules in um, civil suits is the doctrine that before you can go to court, if the state has set up administrative procedures, non-court procedures for redressing things like discrimination, you're required to go through that process, the administrative process, without first jumping to court. So you have to do the administrative relief before you can get the judicial relief. And this is just a letter from the Civil Rights Department, State of California, that they, uh, I, I guess Gina Carano had started the administrative process and had received from them a right to sue notice, which is essentially them saying, all right, well, we've completed the administrative process um, to no effect, no relief, so now you're allowed to proceed to a civil court. That's the, the one exhibit they attach. So it's not evidence of any of the claims in the complaint, but of course, there doesn't have to be any claims in the complaint. I mean, evidence in the complaint. There has to be claims in the complaint, of course. The evidence comes later. The evidence comes in the form of the <clears throat> discovery, 